Hi, my name is Elizabeth Hall, and I'm a teacher development specialist with the Office of Special Education. Today, we are going to do some reading and math lessons using our unique learning system that are appropriate for students in grades K through second. Would you like to get started with me? Great. Well, let's come along and let's see what lessons we're going to do today. If you remember last week, we read a story called At the Petting Zoo, where our friend Jack visited a petting zoo and he got to meet and pet different animal parents and animal babies. Do you remember that? Well, we're gonna read that story again today and we're gonna talk about some different characteristics or different things that the parent and baby animals have. Let's talk about some of the words that we learned in our story last week. Remember, Jack went to the petting zoo and he met animals. He met the parent animals, those were the big ones. And he met their baby animals, those were the smaller ones. Remember, he met a goat and a rabbit, a llama, a chicken, and some turtles. And we talked about some of the ways they were different and the same last week, how the parent animal and the baby animal looked the same, but a little different. We're going to talk about that more today. So let's see what we're going to do today. First, we're going to read our story at the petting zoo again, and we're going to do some reading comprehension activities where we talk about the setting and the main character in the story and what events took place. Then we're going to do some spelling lessons that have to do with our story. After that, we're going to do some different math activities. We're going to do some addition and subtraction number sentences, and we're going to group with arrays. That just means we're going to make equal groups of items. Would you like to get started and do this lesson with me today? Great. I'm so glad. Well, let's start off revisiting our story at the petting zoo with our friend Jack. Do you remember Jack? Good. Remember the title of my book was called At the petting zoo. And remember the author, Jen Voigt? What did the author do? You're right, the author wrote the words. And our illustrator was Alex Wheeler. What's the illustrator do again? You're right, the illustrator is the person that draws or makes the pictures. Well, let's review our story again and remember all the different animals that Jack met at the petting zoo. This is Jack. Today, Jack is visiting a big petting zoo. Jack sees many animals at the petting zoo. Some of the animals are parents, and some of the animals are babies. Jack can pet the parent animals. He can pet the animal babies too. Jack pets a big goat. The big goat is a mother. Jack pets a little goat too. The little goat is a baby. The mother goat has big horns. What does the baby goat look like? How is it different? How is it the same? Hmm. How is the baby goat different from the big mother goat? You're right. The baby doesn't have any horns. How are they the same? You're right. They look the same. They're the same color. They have the same number of legs. You're right. Let's keep reading. Jack pets a big rabbit. The big rabbit is a mother. Jack pets a little bunny too. The little bunny is a baby. The mother rabbit has long ears. What does the baby bunny look like? How is it different? How is it the same? Hmm, how is the baby bunny different from the mother bunny? You're right, it's definitely smaller, but they're both the same color and they both have long ears. How are they the same though? You're right, those two things. How are they different? The mother bunny has much longer ears, you're right. Oh, Jack pets a big llama. The big llama is a father. Jack pets a little llama too. The little llama is a baby. The father llama has a long neck. What does the baby llama look like? 
How is it different? How is it the same? How is the baby llama different? Well, he's shorter and he's smaller. They both are the same because they have a long neck and they're the similar color. But does the baby llama, is his neck as long as his father's big llama's neck? No, it's a little shorter, you're right. Let's keep reading. Jack pets a big chicken. The big chicken is a mother. Jack pets a little chick too. The little chick is a baby. The mother chicken has a sharp beak. What does the baby chick look like? How is it different? How is it the same? How is the baby chick different from the mother chicken? You're right. The baby chick is a different color. The baby chick is yellow and the mother chicken is white. The mother chicken is also a lot bigger. You're right. But how are they the same? You're right again. They both have feathers and they both have beaks. But I bet that mother chicken, her beak is very sharp, isn't it? Sure is. Oh, Jack pets a big turtle. The big turtle is a father. Jack pets a little turtle too. The little turtle is a baby. The father turtle has a hard shell. What does the baby turtle look like? How is it different? How is it the same? Oh, how is the little baby turtle different from the big father turtle? You're right. The little baby turtle is small and the bigger father turtle is much bigger. But how are they the same? They both have hard shells, you're right. They both are the same colors. They both have the same number of feet and legs. You're right. But they still were a little bit different, weren't they? Jack is happy. He likes visiting the petting zoo. Would you like to visit a big petting zoo too? The end. Wow. I really enjoyed reading about all those different animals and you're right. Some of the animals are different from the way that they look with their parents and some of them look the same. Some of them have similar characteristics and some of them have different characteristics. Characteristics are just a big word to explain the way something can look like or be like. Well, let's get ready to do a reading comprehension activity and we're going to talk about the who, the what, and the where in our story. We're going to talk about the character, that's the who. We're going to talk about where, that's the setting, and what, these are the things that took place in my story. So let's start with our first one. Who was our story about? Who was the character in our story? Was our story about Drew? Was our story about Paige? Or was our story about Jack? You're right, Jack is the character in our story. And where did Jack go? Where does the story take place? What was the setting? Was it at a restaurant? Was it at a petting zoo? Or was it at a school? Right again, the setting of our story was at the petting zoo. Jack visited the petting zoo, remember? And what does the character do? What did Jack do at the petting zoo? He pets different animals. He plays with his friends. He builds a birdhouse. What did Jack do? You're right. He got to pet all sorts of different animals at the petting zoo. Now remember he pet some baby animals and some parent animals. What were the baby animals like? The baby animals did not look like their parents. They looked the same as and different from their parents? Or they all looked the same? Let's think about this. They did not look like their parents. Well, let's think about some of the animals we met. Remember the llamas and the goats? Did they look like their parents? They did, so that can't be right. Let's look at the next one. They look the same as and different from their parents. So some looked the same but some look different. Well, remember the goats look the same, but remember the chickens look different, didn't they? So let's save this one. Let's look at the last one. They all look the same. 
Well, that can't be right because we know that some of the animals, like the goats and the llamas and the bunnies, they look the same, but then we know that some looked a little different, like the chickens. So I think it's this one. Do you agree? You're right. Some look the same as some look different from their parents. Very good. Let's do one more activity before we move on to our spelling. We are going to talk about what the story was about. So let's see. Jack's going to visit each of our different animals and we're going to talk about a characteristic or something that each animal has special to them. Let's visit the llamas first. Do you remember the llamas? The father llama and the baby llama? What was so special about the llamas? Did they have a sharp beak? Big horns? A hard shell? A long neck? Or long ears? What did we learn about the llamas? You're right, they had long necks, didn't they? Great work. Who should Jack visit next? Let's visit the turtles. What characteristics did we learn about the turtles? Do they have a sharp beak? Big horns? Hard shells? Or long ears? What did we learn about the turtles? You're right, they had hard shells on their backs. Who should Jack visit next? Let's visit the goats. What did we learn about the goats? Do they have a sharp beak? A big horn? Or long ears? You're right, they had big horns, didn't they? The baby doesn't have horns yet, but his will grow. All right, Jack, tell us about the bunnies. Do they have sharp beaks or long ears? You're right, those bunnies sure did have some long ears. Who was the last animal that Jack visited? Yes, he visited the chickens. Did our chickens have, what did they have? What were their characteristics? You're right, they had sharp that baby chick, did he look the same or different from his mother? You're right, he looks different. They both had beaks though, but I bet that mother chicken has a much sharper beak, so you better be careful if you meet a chicken. All right, great work doing our story. Let's see if we can do some spelling words. How does that sound? We're going to look at a few different spelling words that we might have read within our story today. First, we're just going to read our spelling words and spell them together. Then we're going to fill in some sentences. Let's look at our words that we have. We're going to say the word, spell the word together, and say it again. Let's start. This is the word B. It's spelled B E. This is the word B. Next, we have the word little, L-I-T-T-L-E, little, something is little. Next, the word come, C-O-M-E, come, you can come with me. Next is the word animal, A-N-I-M-E. A L. Animal. Jack visited an animal at the petting zoo. Mother. M O T H E R. Mother. The mother chicken has a sharp beak. Remember her? And our last word is the word does. D O E S. Does. What does the goats say, bah, good job. Let's see if we can fill in some sentences with the spelling words we just talked about. We're gonna have a sentence or the start of a sentence and we're gonna have to fill in the blank with the spelling word that makes the most sense and makes a complete sentence. How does that sound? All right, let's start with our first sentence. The bear cub is. Which spelling word makes this a complete sentence that makes sense? Let's try each one in our blank. The bear cub is B. No. The bear cub is little. The bear cub is come. The bear cub is animal. 
the bear cub is mother or the bear cub is does. Which one did we think made the most sense? I think you're right. The bear cub is little. Little. L I T T L E. Good work. Let's do the next one. A dog is a puppy's. Hmm, which one will make a complete sentence? Let's think about first. The puppy is the baby, right? So the dog must be the parent. Let's see if we can find the word in our spelling list that is the parent. A dog is a puppy's be? No. A dog is a puppy's come? No. A dog is a puppy's animal? Not quite. A dog is a puppy's mother? Maybe. Let's save it. A dog is a puppy's does. Which one makes a complete sentence? You're right, mother. M-O-T-H-E-R. Good job. He can blank to the zoo with us. He can be to the zoo with us. No, he can come to the zoo with us. Maybe he can animal to the zoo with us. He can does to the zoo with us. Which one makes the most sense to complete the sentence? You're right, it's come. He can come to the zoo with us. Come, C-O-M-E. I will blank, very excited. We only have a few left. Let's see which one completes our sentence. I will be very excited, maybe. I will animal very excited. That doesn't make a complete sentence. I will does very excited. Which one makes a complete sentence? You're right, it's B, 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 E. Two left. The big blank has black fur. The big animal has black fur. Maybe, let's save it. The big does have black fur. You're right, it's animal. What animal could have black fur? Could be a dog or a cat or a panther. Let's spell animal. A-N-I-M-A-L, animal. Last one. What sound does a cat make? Good work. Let's spell our spelling word does. Does, D-O-E-S. What sound does a cat make? Meow. Good job. Do you remember in our very first video that we did together, my friend Mr. T the cat came to join us? That was a lot of fun, wasn't it? All right, well, thank you for doing some reading lessons. Let's do a few math lessons today before we end our video. And we are gonna start with some number sentences. How does that sound? We are gonna add some numbers and we are going to subtract some numbers. First, let's start with adding or addition. Can you say addition? Very good. When we add things, we're bringing them together. Let's read our first sentence, our first number sentence. Paige feeds three chickens. Let's count. One, two, three. Drew feeds one chicken one. They feed some all together, but we don't know. We need to count. How many do they feed all together? Well, remember when we add, we're putting all these together. We're bringing them all together and counting them all together. So should we count all the chickens together? Let's do it. How many chickens do they feed all together? One, two, three, four. They fed four all together. Can you help me find the number four? Zero, one, two, three, four. Great work. They fed four chickens all together. Let's keep going. Remember, we're adding, so we're bringing our numbers together. Let's see what Paige did this time. 
page counts four eggs. One, two, three, four. Drew also counts four eggs. One, two, three, four. They count C, but we don't know all together. How many do they count all together? Let's bring them together and count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four plus four equals eight. Let's find the number eight. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Very good. I know that four plus four equals eight. We put the numbers all together. Very good. Do you think you would like to do some subtraction? I knew you would. Now, let's say the word subtraction together. Subtraction. Remember when we did addition, we brought our numbers together? Well, subtraction is the opposite. We're going to take them away. Let's read these number sentences and see if we can take some numbers away. Page sees six chicks. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six baby chicks. But she put four chicks in a pen. She put four away. Oh, so we're going to take them away by scratching them out. There are C chicks left. We don't know how many are left. Well, let's see. First, let's count our six. Then we'll take four away, and then we'll have to see how many's left. So remember, I start with six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And how many went back in the pen? One, two, three, four. So we're gonna scratch them out. They went away, goodbye. How many are left? One, two. There are two chicks left. Can you help me find the number two? Zero, one, two. Very good. Six minus four equals two. Good work. Let's do one more subtraction sentence. Remember, we're taking away. Drew has 10 eggs. He puts five in a basket. There are C eggs left. How many eggs are left? Well, let's first count our 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. How many are we gonna put away or scratch out? Five, you're right, let's scratch them out. One, two, three, four, five. How many do we have left? One, two, three, four, five. There's five left. Can you help me find the number five? Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Good work. This number sentence reads 10 minus five equals five. Good job. Well, you did such a great job putting our number sentences together and taking them apart, adding and subtracting. Now we are going to do some work called grouping arrays. And this is a fancy way to say we are going to make equal groups of something. So let's start with our first one. Drew has some chickens. He put the chickens into two equal groups. That means the two groups have the same number or the same amount. I have two groups right here. Here's a group and here's a group. And how many am I gonna put in each group? I'm gonna put five and five, it has to be the same. 
Let's put one in each one at a time. One, one, remember I have to get to five, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, and five. Look, we used all of our chickens and we have the same number in each group. How many chickens do we have all together? Let's see, five plus five equals, let's count them all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Five plus five equals ten. Can you help me find ten? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Still work. I know that two equal groups of five equals ten. Two groups with the same number of five chickens equals five all together. Good work. Let's see if we can do one more. Wow, look, this time we have four groups. We're gonna put our eggs into four equal groups. We need four eggs in each group. But let's start by doing one at a time. Ready? One, 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 one. What's next? Two, 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 two. What's next? Three, 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 three. And last, Four, 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 and four. Did we use up all of our eggs? We did. We have one, two, three, four groups, and we have four eggs in each group. Should we count all of our eggs together to see how many we have all together? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Wow, can you help me find the number 16? Zero, one. Oh, I have a visitor who's gonna help us count. Would you like to help me count, Walker? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Wow, four groups of four, four plus four plus four plus four equals 16. Wow, that is great work, friends. Guys, you did some wonderful work on all of our lessons today. Remember, we read about Jack and he went to the petting zoo. We talked about different animal characteristics. We talked about the characters and the settings. We practiced some spelling words together and we filled in the blanks. And we even got to do some number sentences, some addition where we brought things together and subtraction where we took things apart. And we even did some arrays where we made equal groups. Well, I really enjoyed doing this lesson with you today, and I hope that you get to join me for the next one. Remember, my name is Elizabeth Hall, and I'm a teacher development specialist with the Office of Special Education. And this was a video using our unique learning system for grades K through second, doing reading and math. Bye.